Alrighty, welcome back, boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shank, coming to you live from Mayfield. And we're going to be getting near the end of the week for this warm up. But we want to make sure that we're using the ideas that we've had in previous years and make sure that we can use new strategies to be able to solve them. So it says simplify. So again, uh, make sure you know the difference between simplify and evaluate. Uh, simplify, you're just trying to get down to one value. It's just one side of an equation, which is just an expression. So you notice how there's uh, operations and numerical values in there. And so we're just gonna kind of get like a nice little pyramid going. And so if you notice also too, this is gonna be our uh, order of operations. And so if you need to remember those as well, again, that's gonna be that gem DOS. And so as a quick recap, we know that the G stands for the grouping symbols, the E stands for exponents, we have multiplication and division, and we have addition and subtraction. So again, th uh, this should be very simple for ourselves. And again, as we're going uh, down the staircase this time, you wanna make sure that you are working left to right. So that means if you have, you know, maybe some division first on the far left, that means you would have to do the division first. So let's kind of use the, uh, these ideas for ourselves. So we have uh, negative four squared plus the quantity square root of 100 minus 19. And so usually what I do is I highlight uh, the step that I'm going to do and then everything else stays the same. And that's the important part there because a lot of people kind of try to do two steps at a time. If you're gonna try to do that, you know, think about when you're going down a staircase, the more and more steps that you try to do, the more difficult it becomes to walk and you will fall down the staircase and we'll walk around you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work inside again, that grouping symbol comes first. And so I would see, okay, I have two kinds of grouping symbols, but there's nothing really to do in that first one on the left. So I'm gonna work in that uh, square root inside of here. So I'm gonna just do 100 minus uh, 19. And I can use that uh, Desimus calculator for ourselves. I can say 100 and then minus 19. Boom, has the answer on the side. And so again, all I say is, okay, 81 and then everything else stays the same. So you make sure that you're seeing how we got from uh, that first step to here. All right, so same idea. You start at that same staircase. You have any kind of grouping symbols? Yes, we do. We're still going to work inside, uh, not inside the square root, but we're actually going to take that square root. So let's actually do that. Let's do uh, the square root of our previous answer. And so that's just going to be nine. And so we say, all right, everything else stays the same. And so we have, again, the square root of 81 is nine. Bring everything else down. And so now we can do, uh, let's do this. Let's say negative four in parentheses. Again, that parentheses makes it a huge difference because you want to make sure that you're doing negative four times negative four. And so that is going to be 16. So let me actually, before I forget, I want to make sure you highlight that step that you're doing. So we're doing that exponents here first. And so now, okay, do we have any grouping symbols in this line here? We do not. Is there any exponents? Nope. And so if you want to, uh, you could put, you know, a nice little check to say where you're at. So do we have any multiplication division? Nope. However, we do got a little bit of addition subtraction, so always work far left to right. And since there's only one step, very simply, you just do 16 plus nine is 25, and you know you are good. So make sure, again, you're seeing you know, how I move one step at a time. You're not overstepping too far for yourself. This might seem like a little bit too much. However, I can assure you, now that we're uh, math eight, you can use, so let's say you can use uh, Desmos to simplify. And so let's kind of see what that looks like. If you type it in exactly how it looks, meaning this, I'm gonna type it in uh, exactly how I had here. So let's actually go back, uh, let's go back the whole way to where we started with. 
And so if you're given uh, that initial problem, you see, okay, hey, what, what can I do? Well, I, I'm just trying to simplify this. So if I type in very carefully, I have parentheses and then negative four. I have that squared and I say, all right, plus, and then I have at the square root of 100 minus 19. And if you notice, if your expression inside of that calculator looks exactly like your problem, it will give you the same exact answer without all the trouble and switching back and forth between highlighters and whatnot. So again, this is available to you each and every problem. You wanna make sure that you can use it to the best of your ability. Please, 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 again, this is extremely, extremely simple if you make it look very similar. Make sure you're very careful though. If you have you know, one little thing, say we had that square root and we ended it there and then we said minus 19, again, it gives you a different answer. So do notice though that you need to have everything exactly how it looked originally. All right, so let's try it out uh, for this next one. All right, so it says simplify the expression when x equals four and y equals three. So this is gonna be our replacement values. That means that you're going to just substitute your values in for your variables using parentheses. Again, you, you wanna make sure you are using those parentheses because otherwise it might uh, get a little bit more difficult with the signs, whether it's positive or negative. And so that's why I kind of surround them. I kind of have a nice little uh, package around them so that way they stay good. So now I substituted in my values. So I had uh, wherever I had a an X. Maybe let me, uh, me kind of uh, highlight this so that way we see it. All right, anywhere where it had an X, that means I had to have now a four. So again, that's how I kind of had fours in here. And then anywhere where it had a Y, we now have a three. So it's just gonna be that one in there. So make sure you're seeing, uh, again, how I moved from that first step, substitute using parentheses. And now you can, uh, very similar to what we had before, highlight each step that you're doing, everything else stays the same. So let's uh, see how we can do that. So we're gonna do, again, we're gonna use that uh, wonderful order operations for ourselves. We're working down that staircase, so we're starting inside that grouping symbol. And so we're gonna see, hey, what do we need here? Well, we have, let's not forget, we need that little dot in there to say multiply. And so we have inside these parentheses on the far left, just like a sentence, you wanna start at the far left, we have four plus five. And so that's the part I'm gonna highlight. I'm gonna be inside those parentheses I'm going to do 4 plus 5. And so I'm going to have that equals 9. And so I'm going to say, all right, I have 9 every times 4. Everything else stays the same. So again, notice how from each line I am keeping the same, uh, the same everything else where, uh, where we highlighted. So again, highlight each step that you're doing. Everything else stays the same. All right, so now... What can we do? Well, uh, we don't really have any grouping symbols that where we can do anything inside of them. So we can kind of check that one off. All right, so what about exponents? Well, if you see here, yeah, we got a little uh, exponent here. We have three squared. So we're gonna do, or that's the one that we are going to work with next. We do three squared. And I know there's a negative on that's outside of it, but we wanna just do one thing at a time. So again, I said uh, three squared is nine. And so I say, all right, everything else stays the same. Since there's no other exponents, we can check that one off. And now we do multiplication division. So always work to the far left first. And so we say, all right, we have nine times four. Again, the uh, parentheses in here, or excuse me, that little dot in there, that means multiply. And also anytime you have parentheses like this, I could also say, uh, I'm just gonna write on the side. This would be the same exact thing if I said nine, I had in parentheses, uh, the same thing. Again, you notice that from when we uh, were multiplying fractions, this is the same exact thing if whether or not I have that dot in the middle. So just a uh, idea to keep in mind. 
So we multiply those two together and we say, all right, that's 36. Everything else stays the same. And you kind of notice, hey, I'm noticing that this is kind of getting uh, more narrow to the bottom. So I know I'm getting towards the end of this problem. All right, working left to right and using order operations, we would not do uh, that 36 minus nine. We're gonna do the nine times two first. Again, we wanna make sure that we're doing one step at a time. And so that's 18. And now we can do our 36 minus nine, which is 27. And then we do those two add together it is going to be 45 and we're good. Again, once you get down to that one term or you can't simplify any further, that's when you know you're good. Be careful because a lot of times people, uh, people are going to try to say, you know, if there's a variable term and a constant term, they're going to try to combine them. Please do not do that. You want to make sure that you're uh, not adding your apples and oranges together. You want to keep those separate. So again, you kind of notice, hey, this is seems like a lot of work. Maybe we can try something a little bit uh, simpler. So let's use that uh, Desmos for ourselves. If we can make it look exactly how we did, as the problem originally gives us, if you notice, if we type in exactly how it looks, we're gonna say x plus five, and we're gonna say times, and we have x and then minus y squared, and we have plus nine times two. And if you notice, hey, that little triangle comes up, and what's that saying? It's saying there's too many variables. You need to define what those variables are. I mean, you need to give a value to those variables. That's, that's what it's saying. I need, I'm, it's saying, hey, I need to be able to uh, check to see what those variables stand for. So if we define them, meaning we start a new line, so you just press enter, or you hit the little uh, blue or orange uh, enter sign, and you say, okay, well, I know that X equals four, and it still needs one other variable, we need to define y, and it tells you that right there. So it says, hey, I appreciate that you uh, put in four for x, but you wanna make sure you also define y. Once you're able to define and make that new line each at a time, it gives you that reduced or simplified value at the very top. Again, you can have these in uh, any order, top to bottom, as long as you are defining them correctly.